Learning that I could specifically determine for myself what the boundaries were for me, what I wanted to do, give my money, give my time, give of my service to who I wanted to give it to when I did, that I get to make that decision. And just because you get a hundred requests a week doesn't mean you have to try to fulfill all of that. Just because you have all of these demands on your time and on you doesn't mean that you have to say yes. You get to decide because you're the master of your fate, the captain of your soul, as William Ernest Henley said in Invictus. And understanding that really changed the meaning of my life in that I was not no longer driven by what other people wanted me to do but took charge of my own destiny, making choices based upon what do I feel is the next right move for me. So being able to go continuously to that space that I call the power station of God, universal energy, the divine flow, being able to tap into the space where you and all of life and me and all of you in this room, all beings, all things are connected. We had a meditation this morning where we talked about entering that space. That space is real. You cannot, in my opinion, have a meaningful life without a life of self-reflection, of spiritual and moral inquiry, and knowing who you are and why you are truly here. Spiritual self-reflection to understand who you are and why you are here. And when you understand the depths of that, you allow yourself to tap into the space of that which is the force, the universal energy, the divine flow. And you do that with a sense of authenticity that only you can, that only your energy can bring, you become untouchable in whatever it is you choose to do. So one of the reasons I believe that I've been able to be so successful is because during the years where we had, you know, fierce competition from other shows and other people, I would always say to my producers, you can't run their race, you can only run yours. And you really can only run what you're doing. You can't even worry about your own fellow producers. You can only run your own race. That lesson that Glinda the Good Witch gives to the Wicked Witch of the West when she says, go away, you have no power here, that's a powerful lesson. Because I have seen over the years in so many interviews and even in my real life experiences, people losing their power because you're giving your power to other people. You lose your power when you try to take control of somebody else's energy because you have no power in any energy field other than that which is your own. And your real job in life is to figure out how do you master your field? How do you do that? By consistently choosing love, by living in the space of gratitude and knowing that that power that you feel from time to time comes from a source that is greater than yourself because nobody gets out of here alone nobody nobody is making it alone and when you are trusting in your when you are afraid when you are sad when you are unable to make a decision when you are challenged when you are moving in the direction of all that which is fearful it's because you're trusting in your own power my ability to step into literally the flow and grace that I call God is what has gotten me here. And I consistently mind that because having a spiritual life isn't something that you can attain because you already are a spiritual life. Pierre Teilhard de Chardin said, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. I know this to be true. So it's not like you can go out seeking a spiritual life. You already are one. And the real job is for you to become aware of the soul's calling and the spirit 
that resides in, above, around, and through you. And be about the business of fulfilling that. There is no one else in creation like you. There's nobody like you. And what you've come to do and what you have to offer is like no other, even if they're all doing the same thing. Although everybody's in the same class doing very similar things, no one brings the level of uniqueness and authenticity that you can bring. Nobody does it like you. And understanding that what you have to offer, what you've come to give to the planet is your gift, your offering in a way that nobody else can and how much that matters. It matters to you, it matters to the people that you love, and it matters to our planet that you are here. It's, it's just, you know, it's a miracle. It's a miracle that we get to be here. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Albert Einstein once observed that uh, you have the most fundamental and major decision that you have to make in your life is this. Do I live in a friendly or a hostile universe? Which is it? Is it a universe that is filled with hostility and anger and people wanting to hate each other and people wanting to kill each other? Is that what you see? Because when you see the world that way, that's exactly what you will create for yourself in your life. This is from great scientific minds. And the interesting thing is that this is not just a, a clever play on words, that when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. It's actually a very scientific thing, and I'm going to show you that in just a moment. I'd like you to imagine the following scene. You're in your house. You've got your car keys in your hand. The lights go out. Power failure. You can't see a thing. You stumble around in your living room and you drop your keys. And you look around for a moment and you realize that you're never going to find them in the dark. But you look outside and you notice that the street lights are on. So in your mind, a light bulb goes off. I'm not going to sit around here in the dark and grope around looking for my keys when there's a light on outside. I'm going to go out here under the street light and I'm going to look for my keys. Why are you laughing? This, is, this makes a lot of sense. So you're out here and you're groping around and you're looking for your keys and you're looking and looking and your neighbor comes along and says, what happened, Wayne? Well, um, I dropped my keys. Oh, well, I'll help you look for them. And the two of us are now down here looking for our keys and looking finally he says to me uh, excuse me but um where did you drop your keys well um i dropped them in the house he said you mean to tell me that you dropped your keys in the house and you're looking for them out here in the street light doesn't make any sense and i said well it doesn't make any sense to grope around in the dark when there's light out here now you laugh and you think how silly that is but isn't that exactly what we do when we have a problem, a difficulty, a struggle that is located inside and we're looking for the solution outside, someplace outside of ourselves. It would be like going to the doctor and telling him all of your symptoms and the doctor says, oh boy, you've got a lot of symptoms. And he starts writing out prescriptions. You need a prescription for this symptom, you need a prescription for that symptom. And finally, he gets this four or five, and you go to walk out, and you say, well, I'd like my prescriptions. He said, no, 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 I'll give this one to your mother-in-law, and I'll give this one to your neighbor, and I'll give this one to your daughter, and I'll give this one to your father. I mean, you're the one with the struggles and with the difficulties, and giving, expecting somebody else to change or something outside of you to get better in order for you to make your life work at this level that I'm calling intention is something you have to really take a hard look at. It's in here. All things are possible. All things are possible literally means all things are possible. So whatever, whatever it is you'd like to attract into your life, whatever you'd like to accomplish, whatever you'd like to do in your life, if you start from a spiritual place, a place of all things are possible, if I return, you know, and get to that place, and then I begin to visualize it and I begin to use my imagination because everything that we see around us, everything in this world was once imagined. Everything, Every, you know, that camera that is there, the, the clothes that you're wearing, the chairs mm -hmm. that we're sitting on, everything mm -hmm. once had to be imagined. If that, I mean, Einstein's famous observation was that, you know, imagination is more important than knowledge. If you can learn how important your imagination is, and that's where your spirit is, in that place. Mm -hmm. And then once you go to that place, in, in, in what it is you'd like to attract into your life, you're coming from a spiritual place, absolutely nothing is impossible.